Today I will be talking about why and how we should spread the gospel in our schools and communities. It's really important for us young people to spread the gospel in our schools. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. These scriptures are telling us that we need to go and tell our friends and family about the one and only God because we are called to preach the word and be the next disciples in this generation. This generation is the chosen generation. That's why we are called chosen youth. There is a meaning behind this name. We did not just pick it because we feel like we are chosen. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. The verse really means a lot because being a young person is real and going to public school is hard. We face a lot of challenges, like people vaping, people asking us, why do we do the things we do? Why don't we cuss? Why do we have long hair or wear skirts? After a while, it gets tiring, but we might feel tempted to do worldly things, but God gave us the strength to fight all those demons and get on our thoughts. Us young people should start P7 clubs in our schools and colleges. You might not want to have a club. You can always talk to one of your friends about Jesus and give them a little Bible study, and if they want to learn more, you can always invite them to church with you or to youth and hyphen outings. So as I tell someone about the word, uh, wait, at, so as I finish the message, I ask you, will you be the one that steps forward and tell someone about the word of God and how he helped you at your lowest time because we are the chosen generation and we need to be the ones that helps people get a relationship with God. Praise the Lord. This generation is meant to share the gospel. Wonderful message. We're going to pray over our offering. Um, we have the basket or the offering plates up here. They're going to play a song, and then you can also give on the app as well. Thank you, Jesus, for this day, this service we have where we can come closer to you, God. Thank you for the many blessings that you've given us as we give back what you have given us. God bless this rest of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
love of Jesus, sing His mercy and His grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, He'll be prepared for us a place. And I can see the light coming, and I can see the day dawning. When we all get to heaven. Me is Jeremiah. How many likes the one Layla just gave? Amen. Amen. So, for our theme becoming, I thought I would try to fit that along with what I felt to, uh, to teach today. So, today in our topic of our theme becoming, I want to talk about what it means to become more like Jesus. Amen. We all need to be more like him every single day in our day and age with social media and influence influencers we see so many people who 
it, we see through, quote, rose-tinted glasses. Most of the time, we see the good. We see every good detail of our life. Another example is in our schools. As we transition in our school year, we can face peer pressure or pressure to become like whatever earthly thing seems good in our eyes and in their eyes. Pressure to sometimes indulge in earthly lifestyles just to either become like the world. But I want to tell you today that there is someone so much better for you. Someone so much better for your life. Someone that was willing to die for you. Someone who is worth following and shaping your life after. Amen. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of man, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, which was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." Wherefore we God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. That was Philippians 2 verses 11 in KJV. In the, in the first verse, it says, let this mind be in you, which literally means Keep thinking this. It means constantly maintain this attitude within yourselves. You may be saying, why would Jesus willingly give up his divine nature with all of its benefits and advantages? Well, because within him, the attitude of those verses which I told you, he had those things. And he regarded sinners as more important than himself. And he was just as concerned with our needs as, as his. So God humbled himself, a God that was all-powerful, all-knowing, and is everywhere at all times. Think about that. A God that was all-powerful, all-knowing, stooped down to our level. Only our God loves us that much to humble himself even unto the death of the cross for you and I. You may be asking why. Why is it so important that all, all these things need to take place that I talked about in verses 5 through 11? So, all those things need to happen. We skip to Philippians 3.10, and it says that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. Amen. So, I leave with you this verse. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. Hello, everybody. Before I start, I would like to give thanks to Pastor Cox, Sister Cox, for letting me speak up on this pulpit. And I will also love to give another thanks to Sister Jill and Brother Andrew for being such encouraging youth pastors. And now, I would like to start with this question. Have you forgotten what the Lord has done for you? In Exodus 14, verse 21 to 22, it reads, that And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them, unto their right hand and on their left. And in these verses, not Moses, but God has saved the Israelites from oppression. The execution of Israelite newborn boys and harsh labor of many kinds, the Lord has delivered his people from. And because God loved his people so much, he has saved his people in a mighty way, forcing the rivers apart, all while using a doubtful man, a man that was least likely to be a deliverer and was least likely to become a leader. 
Likewise, many times God works mightily in our lives, healing us and delivering us from the oppression of the devil and has brought us to places that we would have never imagined being in today. And just how the Israelites rejoiced right in the next chapter, we tend to rejoice soon after God has done a mighty work in our lives. But after some time walking through the desert, the Israelites start to lose faith and rebel, whether if it's through complaints, whether if it's through idolatry, and whether if it was through sexual immorality, they lost the sight of God. But don't we also lose faith in God as well? Many times we receive miracles and we receive blessings from the Lord, and we are amazed at what the Lord does in the moment. But how long does that momentum last? Oh, how long does that momentum last in a world full of sin when we have to walk through trials and tribulations? In this world, it is so easy to lose our faith in God, and it is so easy to lose our understanding of who God really is. And this is why we must remember the miracles that the Lord has done for us. When we remember our past miracles, we are able to overcome the trials of this world. If God has saved you from this, and if God has saved you from that, then don't you think that he will still continue to be with you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I minister about the Lord's love for a second? The Lord's love is great. The Lord's love is mighty. And the Lord's love transcends all understanding. And guess what? Remembering our past miracles will be our personal minister of God's great love, even through challenging times. And if his love and if his goodness was able to save the Israelites from the oppression of Pharaoh, oh, how much will the Lord continue to guide you through your trials and through your tribulations? Because of what the Lord has done in your life, you are here today. You are able to worship and further learn and understand the goodness of God because of the initial goodness of God in your life and because of the initial miracles present in, within your life. And because of the miracles that the Lord has done, he will continue to work miracles within your life. Oh, it was because of the Israelites' unfaithfulness that God extended the Israelites' time in the wilderness, lengthening the time that the Israelites did not get to step into that promised land. Thus, we could see that unfaithfulness will hinder the amazing miracles that the Lord will have in store for us. But faithfulness will create an environment that the Lord is able to work in. Will not remembering what the Lord has done in the past set up the required faith for what God is going to do in your future? For in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, for by grace through faith we are saved. And if in faith in God is our foundation of our salvation, and if faith in God reconciles us with him, does faith not have the power to work miracles in our lives? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, when Jesus was about to cast out that impure spirit out of the boy, Jesus starts to question the faith of the boy's father. And the verse says this, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Therefore, if faith has the power to eventually work a miracle, a miracle in that demon-possessed boy's life, will that, that same faith not work a miracle in your life as well? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the faith that you could build through remembering your past miracles will eventually be able to create a space of miracles that you are hoping for. It will answer the prayers that you have in the future. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And for those of you that haven't received your miracle yet, Keep on believing, for we are not in this building by accident, but because of the goodness of God that we are able to wake up today, and because of the goodness of God we are able to drive or hitch a right to church, and because of the goodness of God that we are able to watch today's service. Thank you, Jesus. And I ask this. And if God was able to just wake us up today and bring us to church, oh, how much more able, how much more able will he be able to work in our lives? 
So I will leave you with this. If you feel like giving up, if you feel like throwing in that towel in God's face, if you feel like falling back into sin just like the Israelites did, all I have a word for you. Do not give up. Jesus, all glory to you, Jesus. For if God has brought you this far, why will he forsake you now? That's right. So please, just take a moment each day to look at, back at the past miracles and see how God has been good to you. Then you will be able to build faith because the places that the Lord will take you, all the places that you will go, will not seem plausible to our carnality. But with faith, God will make a way, God will supply, and God will move that mountain in Jesus' name. for you to live defeated it's not the will of God for you to live shackled to sin and Satan it's the will of God for you to be set free and know victory and liberty 
Hallelujah. Through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated for just a moment. I want to say, amen, just how much we appreciate our chosen youth and our chosen youth directors, brother and sister Gannon. Amen. What a wonderful job they've done with the youth this year, this weekend, putting this together. It's just been phenomenal. And how about these three highlights that we just heard? Amen. Sister Layla, Brother Kerrigan, Brother Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Just reminding us that uh, the Lord is doing the work. Thank you, Sister Layla, reminding us we are a chosen generation. Hallelujah. The Lord chose us. We didn't choose ourselves. He chose us. Kerrigan reminded us that we are becoming like the Lord, becoming like Jesus. Amen. And Brother Jeremiah, oh, hallelujah, excited us again about the miracles that God has for everybody. Everybody's got a miracle. The greatest miracle is that you were saved. You were saved by his grace. No greater miracle than that. But even beyond that, God works miracles in our lives. Every single one of us. The fact that we're here today is because of the miraculous working of God. I also want to give a big thank you to Pastor Rodney Kidder for handling the helm here for the last 10 days or so. My family and I had the privilege of going down to Florida. Thank you for those that spoke, Brother and Sister Bowski and Sister Janet. Amen. Appreciate it. Our speakers uh, on Sunday as well. Just I heard great great things about Brother Favel's message, Brother Fox's message, and uh, just just so thankful. Amen. Brother Tony blessed me when he, he shared. He said, Pastor, we sure miss you and your family when, when you all are gone, but oh, he said the, 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 the speakers and the services in your absence were fantastic, and I appreciate that. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not just on our shoulders. It's the Lord's church. Amen. Amen. It is the Lord's church. And when we see young people like we've seen today, we know the church is in a good place. Hallelujah. The mistake that so many churches are making is that they just continually uh, have the adults and the older folks doing everything, everything, everything. And they just kind of marginalize the children and the youth. They, sometimes they just fail to really see the value of this church is not one of those churches. And I appreciate the elders here, the moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, that you support services like this. In fact, I realize that two out of the last three services have been geared towards children. And it'd be easy sometimes to say, my goodness, you know, is pastor going to preach anymore? Is it? <laughs> he's, he's just kind of, you know, just letting everybody else do everything. Well, I appreciate that you see the vision of this. Sister Jody Atwood leading a fine, fine Sunday school team and, and all that just happened here recently with that fantastic VBS. We are so excited, just so excited. You feel the spirit in the church. You feel the momentum. Hallelujah. Feel the power of God flowing. And, uh, and all of our guests that are with us today, God bless you immensely. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. And we are so excited to have back with us brother and sister Root. Amen. When the Gannons said, let's have them back, I said, let's get them. If you were here last year, you remember this service uh, they spoke at last year and just challenged our church in such a wonderful way, encouraged our young people, and uh, we were all just so wonderfully blessed. Stand together with you now as we prepare to bring the man of God. Brother and Sister Root serve as assistant pastors there at the United Pentecostal Church of Johnson City, Illinois. They are a part of our largest missions giving church in the state of Illinois. 
we are so appreciative around here to be able to give around fifteen, seventeen thousand dollars a year to missions. Their church gives over a hundred and fifty thousand, and it's a smaller church, I think, or normal in number than ours. They are a missions giving church. His pastor is Brother Brandon Abernathy, someone that I want to get up here as fast as we possibly can to speak, but he's so busy. In fact, this weekend he's where? He's in Zambia. Brandon Abernathy serves as the missions director for the United Pentecostal Church in the state of Illinois. And just a few days ago, not too long ago, he received a desperate cry from Zambia where they are getting ready to have their general conference, their largest meeting of the United Pentecostal Church. And their speaker, for some reason, had to cancel and Brother Abernathy took that call, which means today in Johnson City, Illinois, amen, their pastor's gone and their assistant pastor's gone, but we believe the Lord's still there. Amen. We believe the Lord. In fact, we're going to pray in just a moment for the service in Johnson City today and tonight that the Lord would just mightily bless. But I so appreciate Brother Abernathy still allowing Brother Root and Sister Root to come and be with us. We would have surely understood if they needed to stay home and take care of things at home. But he said, no, I want you to go. And I believe that means that we are about to hear a message that every single one of us are going to be impacted by. If God wanted the roots to be here that, that desperately, I thank him for what we're about to receive. In fact, if you want to receive from the word of the Lord, would you put your hands in the air as a sign of yielded submission to the Lord. Say, I'm ready to receive from you today, Lord. And let's pray together. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for this that you've already done. We thank you for your anointing that we have already experienced. And we thank you today, Lord, for brother and sister Root uh, that are here to minister once again. We thank you, Lord, God, for the services down in Johnson City, Illinois. We're so pleased and proud of that congregation. Bless them today mightily in their pastor and assistant pastor's absence. Lord, I pray that the Spirit of God would speak through Brother Root, anoint his lips of clay. God, release a word through him that will speak to this congregation, speak to the chosen youth, speak to all of us young and old today, God. We believe that we are in the will of God. Hallelujah, Lord. God bless him as he comes now to minister your word. In Jesus Amen, amen. Can we lift up our hands and lift up our voices? And will we clap our hands unto the Lord? For he is worthy and greatly to be praised. Come on, has anybody come to magnify the name of Jesus? Come on, the name that every demon trembles, every mountain bows, every... Come on, he makes the blind eyes open. He makes the deaf ears open. Come on, he saves the sick and... He saves the sinful and he touched my life and saved my life and I give him glory and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to magnify that name. Because it's only in him, and I'm going to get into this in a minute, but it's only in him that we can live and move and have our being. It is only in him, Sister Cox, that I even have a reason to be up here today or even have the opportunity to address this wonderful congregation because of the glory and power of Christ who has saved us all and moved us. Come on, has he touched you in your life? Has he touched you today? Has he been with you today? My God, hallelujah. Amen, amen. What an incredible honor it is for my wife and I to be here with you all. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Brother Cox, we give you honor for inviting us back. And just thank you for being just a wonderful man of God. And man, what a great pastor you all have. Just who loves the truth and loves souls. And, and I'm thankful. And you know what? I will say this as a young preacher. Thank you for opening up your pulpit because that can be a scary thing. So I honor you. Thank you for believing in young preachers. I, I, I saw these young men and women up here just a few moments ago and it reminded me of myself when I was their age and thankful for God's hand on all of their lives and this youth's life and every one of our lives, amen. Amen, and we honor the Gannons and just their lovely friendship. They're more than just having us come to speak, but we've become dear friends and we went to Bible college with them and they are just wonderful people. How many love your youth leaders? Amen. 
Come on, youth. You better do a little better than that. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 I honor my pastor, Brother Abernathy, as he's gone in Africa. My God. Listen, we, we were just talking, my wife and I were just talking to him about going back. He says, next time I go, I'm going to take you, Justin. He calls me last Thursday and says, uh, <laughs> I lied to you on accident. <laughs> So he's out in Africa, and we're praying for him, amen. And I'm thankful that he's allowed me to come and be with you all, amen. Everyone say amen. If we can open up our Bibles to Acts chapter 17, let's get into the word, amen. Let's just ask him to be with us. and Man, I want to hear from God. How many want to hear from God? Yes. Amen. I do feel I have a specific message for us tonight that will indeed impact the youth, but I pray it impacts our lives individually and that we, we can glean from the word and See what it does in our lives, amen. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verses 27 and 28, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him. Mm, we got to find him. Yes, yes. Though he be not far from every one of us, for in him, someone say him, him. we live and we move and we have our being as certain also of your own poets have said for they are also his offspring for in him come on say in him, in him. do we live and move and have our being amen will you would, would you put your bibles down and will you will you just lift up your hands and just ask god to be as i put the microphone down and will you lift up your voices and just ask him to be with us in this place oh and magnified in our lives Lord we pray that this word would fall on fertile soil and that your will would be done in Jesus mighty name amen amen you may be seated in the house of the Lord amen praise God Acts chapter 17 we're seeing here the amazing preacher Paul he is he is preaching to Athens on Mars Hill let me give a little bit of context if that's okay he's preaching in Athens on Mars Hill and he, he's talking about some superstitions that they're very devoted people. These are the Greeks, right? They believed in, you know, their prophets and they believed in their poets and they believed in Zeus and they believed in all the, maybe of you that gone to college, you've heard of, you know, a, a thought, you know all of these uh, poets that we still quote today. He was dealing with that in the culture. They were superstitious. They were devoted. In fact, uh, we'll find here in the Bible that there is an inscription in there on Mars Hill that says, and they worship to the unknown God. Paul is making no mistake where he's preaching at. He knows exactly who he's preaching at and where he's preaching at. On Mars Hill right there, there is an inscription that says to the unknown God, this tomb, this, this idea, this, uh, this unknown God that they don't know about. These, these Greeks, they don't know the, the unknown God. Who is it? And Paul comes very clearly and he comes and states very clearly, I know the one true God that you do not know, that he is one God, he is one Lord, he is one faith, one one, is that okay preaching on a Sunday morning that he is the God that is above all and through all and in you all and in him he says we live and move and have our being he goes on to describe God that he made the world and that he is the creator of us all and even though we live in a world that wants to just blur distinction and wants to blur what the truth is and you have your own truth and I'll have my own truth and in a world that's trying to seek after truth he is made, this is not a new thing by the way this is not a new thing that we're facing in our culture. Paul is dealing with it right here. And he goes on to say that he is the creator of all things, of all the universe, of all the world, of all the earth. He is the creator. We didn't, let me just pause right here and say you are not a cosmic accident, that you are not just whirled out someday by accident, that you are created for a purpose, you are created for a being. Come on, that's good for the youth and that's good for the old folks. That you are created for a being, that you are created for a purpose. You are not some cosmic accident, but you were intentionally and beautifully and wonderfully made. Yes, you were. Come on, I feel a little something in the house. He aimed to bring them the knowledge of the only one true living God. He was letting them, yes, let them know, yes, there is a God and that he is truly one. He goes on to describe God. He made the world creator. He describes him as not far away. Mm. 
Praise God for that, that he's not just some distant God out there, that he's not just some God that I don't know about, that he's not some Zeus or he's not some whatever that I, I've never experienced, that he's not a faraway God, but he lets us know that he's close. Come on, how many have found him to be close in your life when you needed him, when you needed him to do something? You've called on that wonderful name, and he was there. Yes, Praise God that we don't, we don't serve a God, Brother Cox, that just, we're just peons in his eyes and that he just sits on his beautiful throne up there keeping a distance from us. No, 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 he is close. If we seek him, he says that we will find him. And when we find him, he draws us close in relationship. And it is only in him that we can live. We have a, necess we have a necessity to depend on him. We have, we, that's all we can do, folks. That's all we have in our life. We have a necessity in our hearts that we need him. Amen. I know, I know that's simple, but it's true. How, man, in our lives, there's th things that go on in our lives, and we try to take the wheel, and we try to do our own things and do our own agendas and do our own mights, but it's only in Him. How many have found yourself in a mess because you left God out of it? How many of you found yourself in a situation you had no idea about because you left God out of it? How many have woke up one day and say, how did I even get here? What is this mess that I put my, think of the prodigal son, Pastor, where he wakes up in that pit. How did I even get here? Because he got there without God. Because with God, he will give you providence. He will give you blessing. He will give you. It is in him that we live. He is the only one that can give me life. He's the only one that can give me purpose. He. Youth, I want you to hear me. He's the only one that can give you true meaning and true purpose in our world. Young adults, I want you to hear me. If you're certain, I know it's hard to make decisions about college and decisions about careers, but it is only in him that we can find. Get the degree. That's good. Go for accounting, whatever you need to do. Get that degree. Follow after God. You hear me. I'm not against that. But what I am against is doing it without God because it's only in him that we live. And it is him that we move when we make a mess out of our life. We want to take control, but he brings order to our chaotic life. When we allow him to order our steps, then we move. Okay, God, how do you feel about this? Okay, we move here a little bit or we move there a little bit. Why? Because he's moving our lives. I believe that God can speak to you in any situation in your life that you just got to mention his name and he'll tell you where to move. And it is in him that we have our being. He makes us into his image. He brings us in relationship and he changes who I used to be into who he created me to be. He, he took that one thing that I made my mess out of and made that thing that I wanted, that made that thing that I seeked after and he created me back into his purpose. I get back into covenant and relationship when we have our being in him. The word seek is, by the Oxford Dictionary is, is defined to attempt to find. Attempt to desire or to obtain. But in the Greek here, it's very, it's very clear that it's a notion of worship. If, we, if you have a biblical definition of worship, you see that it's not just a, a, a praising. It's not just an outward uh, expression, although we need that. That's the difference. But worship is a lifestyle. That's the difference between praise and worship. Praise is the outward expression that we've done here a few moments ago where we lifted our hands and shouted and clapped, and that's good, that's biblical. But worship is more deeper than that. Worship is a lifestyle. Amen. Worship is who I am. Worship is what I am and be. In order to seek him, it requires our captivation. Captivation requires attention. To captivate means to attract or hold the interest and attention of. Captivation is the state of being intensely interested in awe or in terror. If we are going to be the youth group or the church that God wants us to be, we got to be captivated on nothing but Jesus Christ. Let it be said of nothing else but us that we are captivated. What is your gaze on? What is your... Come on, what do you have your, what is your appetite on? What is your things that... What, come on, what, what has your attention this morning? What has your attention today? Uh, uh, Jesus addresses this in Luke 17. He simply says this, remember Lot's wife. Hmm. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall what? Lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life will preserve it. But he says, remember Lot's 
wife. This is a warning to flee from Sodom, right? If we remember about Lot and so- Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot and his wife, we remember that wicked city of Sodom and, and how the world is that representation of that today, that sin was perverse and sin was, was reckoned in that, in that land. But he tells him not to look back. When you leave Sodom, do not look back. And what happens that there was just a little left of Sodom in her heart, Brother Cox, that whenever, he, whenever they left, she decided, I just wanted a peek of what I used to love. My God, let it not be said of us when God tells us to get out of sin, when God tells us to get up from where we're at, that we don't take a second to look back, that we don't look back to where we used to be. Come on, I feel something right now. We don't look back to how we used to be. We don't look back at the mess that we were once in. But when God calls us out, we are meant to stay out. We're not to live in that way. We're not to live back in Sodom. When you get out out of Sodom stay out don't you look back don't you go back because Sodom will destroy you a lot further than remember Lot's wife don't look back what has your captivation on today give up Sodom can I say that this morning give up Sodom Forget about the memories that were one. I know probably the partying felt good. I know maybe the drugs felt good. The alcohol felt good. I know the times may felt good, but it was such a season. It was just a season, just a moment, a, a temporary glimpse of what felt good. But I, I'm telling you what will only bring you life is Christ. The bar won't do it. The images won't do it. The world won't do it. Nothing will do it. When you get caught out of Sodom, stay. Remember, Lot's wife, remember, remember when God calls you out. Remember. Why do we keep looking back? Why, why, Why do we keep going back to the same thing over and over again when he's called us out of stop fighting for sin in your life? Stop fighting for it to stay in your life when he's called you out. Sodom has no place in our hearts. There's no room for your heart for Sodom and God. There's no room in your heart for Sodom, so keep it out. What happened along the way is some complacency got, got a hold. Along the way, they became complacent with Sodom. <laughs> we even see in verse 16 about, uh, about Genesis 19, verse 16, we see that even Lot lingered a little while. Yeah, maybe he got out of Sodom, but boy, he He lost a wife out of it. He lost some things. Why? Because he lingered. There was still something there that caused him to linger a little while. I don't even want to linger in sin. I don't even want to. I was talking to the youth about this on our fireside chat. I don't even want to get close to the thought of sin. I don't even want to get close to the things that I know that if I touch it, that it will destroy my life. So what's our attention on? God, I pray that we don't start this thing in the spirit and in this race in the flesh. What has your attention? Jesus is getting to the heart of the matter. Some of you are so flooded with your own dreams and your own ambitions, you're missing two things. You're missing the things of God. And when left unchecked, number two, you will miss salvation. God always provided a way of escape for sin. It is not the will of God for you to live in sin in your life. However, although he has provided an escape, He reminded, remember Lot's wife. What's your captivation today? What's got your attention? Amen. So that brings me to my sermon title. How how long am I in this? I got about another hour, Brother Cox says, so we're good. So that brings me to my sermon title, The Great Banana Race. You're thinking he's lost his mind. He's lost his bananas. That's what's happened. He's got a race to find it. When I was in the youth group, this was a little while ago. I'm not that old, but I'm, these kids are making me feel a little old. We were playing that Capture the Flag yesterday, and that little video you saw me running, that what they didn't show was me, I was done after that. There's no way. <laughs> I mean, my lungs were on fire. I'm like, I've not put on the jets like that since years. It's been a while. I don't know. So I was done after that. But when I was in the youth group, young and sprung, and I was... It's ready to go. We, we had a children's evangelist that came through, and uh, he decided it would be so fun if we had a banana-eating contest. 
a banana eating contest. So what they did is, is they got three chairs up on the platform and, and three of my closest friends, um, um, one of the, you know, grew up with them. And I, I, I grew up with no siblings. I'm an only child. Pray for me. And, um, and, but, but my friend Tyler, he was like, he was like my brother. He was like, he could beat me in everything, made me sick. Like, he's one of those guys that are just good at everything, good at basketball, baseball, you know, could play the piano, sing. I mean, he just made me sick, Brother Cox. And so, but I was going to beat him in this banana eating contest, I'll tell you right now. So they got three chairs up there. They blindfolded us, and away we go. We were, the, the, the objective was to eat three bananas as fast as you can. So there I am. I'm, I'm eating my banana. I've got my blindfold on. They've got, they got the crowd involved. They're, yeah, go, Justin, go, Justin, go, Tyler, go, Brandon. Like, they're screaming. They're going, they're, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm ripping up those bananas. I'm eating them as fast as I can. I, I'm about to choke and to puke. And I'm, I'm just going to say, and they're, they're like, oh, it's getting close. It's getting close. We're, we see it's neck and neck. Here comes Tyler. Here comes Justin. Oh, Brandon's coming up the back. But Justin, he looks like he's in the lead. He's going, he's going. He's going, and then I, 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 I get my last banana, and they say, Justin's on his last banana, and the crowd's going wild. They're, yeah, woo, let's go. And then they said, okay, it's going to be close. Whenever you swallow the last bit of your banana, throw up your hands in the air and open up your mouth as wide as you can so we can see. And so there I go. I'm eating my banana. I swallow that last banana. I, I rip that blindfold off, and I see that I'm the only one up there. It was the most humiliating day of my life. <clears throat> there I am thinking I'm in some sort of race and thinking that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat my friends and I'm going to make a difference and I'm, I'm going to do something and I notice I'm the only one up there. You see, I got distracted by the false noises that were around me. I got distracted with the things. Yeah, they were, they, those were false cheers. Those were false things going on. And, and I got distracted with the noise of falsehood around me. And uh, instead of keeping my eye on what was reality, I got distracted with, with the noise of the world. And I got distracted by the things that skewed my vision and skewed my senses. And I got a little bit distracted. And, and if I knew any better, if I, if I maybe put some pieces together, maybe I would have realized I was the only one up there. And can I just say this? We can distract ourselves and focus ourselves out of the attention of God. We can distract ourselves in this world so mighty that we are ending up running the wrong race. If we are not careful, ladies and gentlemen, with our technology and our video games and whatever else we distract ourselves with, that we end up running a banana race instead of the race that God has meant for us to race. I hope you hear me today. That it's not just, we're not here to run some sort of fake, fictitious banana race. We're not here to run the race of what the world says we ought to run. But I'm here to run the calling and election of being sure that my firm foundation is set on Christ. I don't know about you, but I decided that I'm not going to run that banana race. I'm going to run the race that God has set for me. We allow social media or other things in our mind to infiltrate our minds and give us false perceptions. Allowing the noise of the world to distract us from the race that we were meant to run. First Peter 5 and 8 lets us know like this. Be sober and vigilant. Timothy tells us that we need to be sober minded that this race that we were meant to run. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11. A return and so under the sun that the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong. This race that we are running is not a marathon. It's not, it's not a sprint. It's a walk with God. And we, in this time, in this world that we're living in, need to be sober-minded. If there's ever going to be a time where we need to be sober-minded and be vigilant after things of God, if we're going to be who God called us to be, it's time to wake up a little bit and be sober and vigilant after the things of God. I don't want to run a banana race, and when I look up at the end of it all, I've missed it. Sometimes, here's what I think. I think sometimes, how many, how many know we can, we can kind of blame some things on the devil? Caught a flat tire, the devil did it. <laughs> Stubbed my pinky toe, that devil. But sometimes I don't even think any of us understand what true spiritual warfare is about because we can't get ourselves distracted long enough to even follow God. And the enemy knows if he just leaves us alone with our own devices for a while, then it doesn't matter. He just knows that if we just leave ourselves to our own devices literally, 
then he doesn't even have to touch us. He doesn't even have to do anything. And listen, I, you hear me. I don't believe the devil has any power. I don't believe that the, I don't want to go and preach that today. The devil has no power on your life. The devil has no authority in his life but what you give him, okay? But here's what I believe. I don't want it to be said of me that I get so distracted in this world that one day I'm going to wake up and eternity's here and it's done. Whew. I'm sorry, that's a little heavy. But God help us that, that we don't get so distracted with things going on. I, listen, I know there's stuff going on politically. I know that there's stuff going on in our world. I know there's things going on, whatever. I, but if my eyes are set on Jesus, make no mistake, I, I, I'm not going to run the race that the world wants me to run. I'm not going to run and be distracted by I, I don't want to miss out on eternity. I don't want to miss out on what God wants for my life. I don't want to miss out. And run the wrong race. When we start to hear the noise of the world that we are consuming, 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 captivated by nothing but the cheers and roars of the world, trying to be the winners, but in fact, it was nothing but a whole mirage the entire time. And my fear is that someday the blindfold will be lifted off and we're gonna see that we were running the wrong race because we became so captivated. By the cheers of the world. The enemy does this. He blindfolds, he blindfolds you from your reality and consequence of sin. Don't let the noise blindfold you from your true purpose. Don't let the noise blindfold you from who you are called to be. Don't let the noise of what the enemy is trying to do to distract you from who you are meant to be in Christ. For the sin was just a pleasure for a season. And what has your attention on today? Oh, I hope you hear me today. I don't want to be running the race that the world has set for me. Right. Come on out. My God. I don't want to be so distracted that I miss the voice calling my name. I don't want to be so distracted that when God is knocking that I don't even hear the knocking. I don't want to be so distracted that when God is trying to do something in my life that, I, well, I've got it all figured out. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh, God help us. I hope you feel my heart here this morning that I want our captivation. I want every young people, what is your captivation on? I know that we're making big decisions, and I know that we're going to college, some of us, and I know that there are things, maybe school or whatever it is, that is grabbing a hold of our attention. But if we can just block that out for a moment and get our attention on Christ, get our attention back on the cross, get our attention back on who he has called us to be. I know you've got failures. I've got failures. I know you've got mistakes. I've got mistakes. I know you've got things in your life. But if you let go of that, let, let God be God in your life and you allow him to sit on the throne and let him redeem you and cleanse you and let him be that in your life, you can be, you can be filled with purpose and be who God has called you to be. I know this is a very long, but I, I'm closing. I'm closing. We can have our musicians come. I, I'm going to be closing here. I, I know I'm the only one standing between you and lunch right now, so I get that. So I ask you this as we begin to close, if we can all stand. I know this wasn't very long, but I feel like I've delivered what God has, what God has tasked me to do. Who has your attention today? Who is ruling your heart today? It is that ruling of your heart that turns your captivation. And it will be the very thing that will define you, that will consume you. Let God search your heart today. And anything that, here's what an idol is. Here's how I define an idol. Anything that precedes the knowledge of God. Anything that precedes itself above the knowledge of God is an idol in our life. And if we're not careful, it will stunt who God wants you to be. And I want to give that to God. Here's what I believe, that there are world changers in this room. I'm not saying that just has a blatant, I'm not saying that because, I, in fact, didn't even get a lot of amens, and that's okay. I believe that there are people here that will fulfill their destiny in God. And, and last night I talked about potential. 
I talked about that, that we just don't want to live in this potential and never actually become who God wants us to become. That was our theme, becoming. So I talked a little bit about our youth last night, about, about I don't want to be stuck in that potential. I want to become who God wants me to become. And I pray that's the same for us, that we don't, we don't just get stuck. And cause Here's what I believe. I believe we all have a call of God in our lives. And I believe that you were created for a purpose and a destiny. And I believe that you were meant to change the world. The Bible says that with the disciples, they turned the world upside down. And I believe in this last days, listen, I don't know when Christ is coming back, but I know it's soon. And I don't want it, I, I, I want it to be said of us in the end time revival, in these end times that I am living up to my potential, that I am living up to who God has called me to be, and that I'm living up to the purpose and the calling, that I'm living up how God has created me to be. But my, my warning is, I pray, I pray, I pray that we get our captivation back on Christ. I pray we quit running this world's race, and I, I pray that we quit doing the things that the world is wanting us to do, and that we allow God to be God in our lives, and that we allow him to move and shake us and change our lives for a purpose. And, I, and Is anyone else feeling what I'm feeling right now? So here's my call. Here's my call for anyone in this house that maybe your captivation has been on the wrong things. Maybe you're realizing, maybe I've let a few things distract me from my true purpose in God. Maybe I've let a few things kind of sway my, my captivation. This altar calls for you. For any that will come, this, is, this altar calls for you. For anyone that wants to get their captivation back on Christ and say, okay, God, I'm tired of playing the games. I'm, I'm tired of running the wrong race. I'm, I'm tired of living this way. God, put a change in me. This altar calls for you. Come on, people are beginning to come. If you feel this right now, will you come and will you lay down your burdens to God right now and will you get your captivation on Christ? Come on, as they maybe begin to sing, will you begin to just give up some things in your life and will you begin to let God be God once again in that we set our focus and our attention on God? I don't want to be running the banana race. I want to be running God's race. I want to be running the race that he set before me and do it with all might and diligence. I'm ready to... Be who God wants me to be. If you're ready to become, will you come? If you're ready to become who God has called you to be, will you lift up your voice and will you begin to just give it to God right now? Lord, I pray right now, Jesus, for every individual, God, that maybe has got distracted along the race, God. And maybe we weren't as sober or vigilant that we should have been in our minds and we allow the world to distract us a little bit. But Lord, I'm putting my gaze back on you. I'm turning my attention back on you, Lord. I'm putting my captivation back on you. Lord, I want to give you my all. God, I want to give you my life. I want to run the race that you set before. Come on, will you, will you lift up your voice? Will you pray right now? Hallelujah. Respond to the word of the Lord today. Respond to the word of the Lord today. Let the Lord take the blindfolds off your eyes. Let the Lord take the blindfolds off your eyes. We need some adults to come pray with these young people. Everybody connect. Everybody connect. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I'll say in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Oh yes. My desire, my desire passionately is to become what you would want me to be. To be what you've That's right. Me to be. We want to become what he's called us That's to be. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I surrender to your will, to your way. Hallelujah, be what you want me to be, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank God, thank God. Open our eyes 
God. Deliver us, Lord, from the things that have captivated our attention. That's not a God. Hallelujah. Come on, young people. That's right. Surrender. Say yes. Somebody say yes to the Lord. Say yes to the Lord.
prayer if you would like our ministry team to pray for you anoint you with oil as the scripture teaches us we pray for the sick we pray for the infirm we pray for the afflicted right now if you would like prayer please come forward and we will anoint you with oil hallelujah we believe god is able to touch you we're going to just continue to sing we're going to continue to worship come on young people just continue to reach out to god hallelujah the lord's spirit is moving amen amen there's some decisions being made today some good decisions are being made today i'm going to serve the lord with all of my heart i'm going to let him have my full attention hallelujah in the name of jesus oh hallelujah 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 Give her bond of iniquity. God is able to release his anointing. Hallelujah. Destroying every shackle, every chain. In the name of Jesus. God, let there be deliverance today. Let there be deliverance today. Lord, let your anointing destroy everything that hinders, everything that binds. We pray for the power of God to flow in the lives of needs today. Seeking healing. Oh, my God. I'll say yes to your will. Yes to your will. Yes to you. Yes to you.
I would ask at this time for all of our students, all of our students getting ready to go back to school, whether it's preschool, kindergarten, college, whatever it is, if you would come up forward. Any of our adults that are in some type of an adult training, you're welcome as well. We want all of our students to come forward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for this weekend's reminder of who we are and to become what God would desire for us is the highest calling. Amen. To do what He would have you to do. Some of you right now are starting to begin to think about your future, your Wondering, I, I think I'm. I think I want to be a firefighter, or a policeman, or a doctor. I think I want to be a banker or a lawyer. Set your dreams high, young people. Set your set your dreams high, but always keep Christ above all. Keep Christ above all. And say, Lord, I'm always going to be pursuing you. Sister Becker, I want you to come up front, if you would. We love Brother and Sister Becker, and I want her to come up, catching her off guard here. All of you students, we have a special pin for you that you can take. Brother and Sister Gannon have plenty of these, and if you would like one of these for your, uh, for, for your locker or wherever, you want to keep it as a reminder of this day. A reminder of everything that's happened this weekend. We want you to know that you can have it. We're going to pray a special prayer over you. Actually, Sister Becker is going to pray a special prayer over you. She's going to pray that the Lord would bless you and that He would just help you this year to, amen, be the best student you can be. That God would just use you as a witness and a light, amen, in your school. You can overcome that peer pressure that Brother Root was talking about, that peer pressure that puts a blindfold on you and then makes you believe that you're winning the race. Sometimes peers can be positive and sometimes they can be negative. You've got to be careful who you're listening to, who's influencing your life. We're going to pray that the greatest influence in your life would be your godly parents, your godly friends, this church. Amen. That you build those strong circles of friendships. Hallelujah. In faith. But we're going to pray right now over you and ask God to just bless you mightily. And Sister Becker, amen, loves young people. She's the all-time longest serving Sunday school teacher in the history of a First Apostolic Church, <laughs> retired now, but I want her to pray and just pronounce a special blessing and any encouragement you want to give, feel free to as well. All you guys, I love you. And it's, you've been such a blessing to have in Sunday school class. And, and just to see how you've grown and blossomed in the Lord. It just thrills me. It so thrills me. Because Jesus loves you so, so, so much. And he's always, always there for you. Anytime, night or day, he's your best friend. And he will never, never, never fail you. He will bring you through your hard times. He will bring you through any temptation that you might have. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you all, God. Thank God, Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your goodness upon the young people, God. For the little ones, the big ones, God, bless them, God. Help them, Lord, to grow stronger and stronger in you and, and your love. And help them, Lord, to know how much you truly love them that you can always, you are always there, God. Touch them, God, as they're going to schools, God, as they are ministering, God, and they are trying to help other people.
people, God. Help them, Lord, to have a boldness for you, God, that they will tell others about you, God, because that is our mission. That is each one of our mission, is to tell others of the gospel of God. Keep them, Lord. Keep them strong in you, God. Always watch over them, God. Bless their parents, God. Bless their homes, God. Bless them, Lord. Bless them going in and going out, God. Bless the young people, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, be there for them, Lord. Show yourself strong because you always want to embrace each and every one of us, God, and you do so in such beautiful ways. Thank you, Lord, for the promises that each one of them have in you is yes and amen. And bless each and every one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, receive that, young people. Thank God for it right now. Thank God for it right now. Glory. Hallelujah. Wonderful, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You do not understand what's just been prayed over you and prayed away from you by this holy woman of God. Thank the Lord for it. Glory to God. Let's give Brother and Sister Root another hand of appreciation for coming to be with us all the way from Johnson City, Illinois, six-hour drive. Another thing we need you to help us with this past July, we had on Thursday nights special gatherings in our fellowship hall and outside. We call them summer nights, and uh, we were wanting some feedback on that. Do you enjoy summer nights? What 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 can we do to improve it, uh, and so forth? And there is a, a special uh, questionnaire about that in the foyer. And if you would just take a moment, you don't have to put your name on it or anything like that. Just fill it out and give us some feedback on summer nights. And uh, we will be discussing that in our next upcoming staff ministry team meeting. And uh, so the quicker you can get that filled out for us, the better. Also, this is a church that takes up a lot of offerings. And uh, we've been blessed to give this summer, uh, the summer months, we participate in an offering called Move the Mission, formerly Sheaves for Christ. And you've not heard yet much about that because we've been taking a memorial offering, Mother's Memorial and others. But uh, we are in uh, the time of Move the Mission. And I would like every single one of us, young and old, to go to God in prayer and ask the Lord, what would you have me to give sacrificially for Move the Mission? And uh, uh, next Sunday, we'll try to have a video promoting that up for you to watch. You'll have uh, about a month or so to give that, but we do need to start collecting those Move the Mission funds right away. Just briefly reminding us that the main purpose of Move the Mission is to move the mission around the world. They help buy vehicles for missionaries. So whether it's church vans or personal vehicles that get the missionaries around, they buy airplanes and motorcycles as well, boats. Get, there's all kinds of things that Move the Mission goes to buy for missionaries around the globe. And then along with that, some of that money comes back to Illinois and is useful for our youth convention and our camps that we have during the summer. So for every dollar that we give, 40 cents of that comes back to Illinois. So it's a great investment in our young people and all that the Lord does for them through the Illinois Youth Ministry. And so, again, we'll be making more of a promotion about that in the Sundays to come. But keep that in your mind as well. Praise God. Brother Jathan, I want you to come. And you're going to dismiss us today. How many appreciates Brother Jathan? Amen. Like what we see in this young man's life, I want you just to pray that everybody gets home safely and that they have a good rest of their day. All right, please join me in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I come to you in prayer today. I pray over everyone here that they get home safe, yes. uh, that you just keep their hand, your hand over them as they go throughout their day, that we stay in active worship and active praise as we go on throughout our life in this week. Thank you for giving us this day and this time to come together and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.